welcome back to another week of Art Life. This week is going to be all about the medium of charcoal, its history and how its uses for artists help with the preliminary stages of painting, but also how charcoal is a medium in its own right. So charcoal is a lightweight black carbon residue made by a process called pyrolysis or charcoal burning where you heat the wood in a minimal oxygen environment not burning it fast but instead removing all the water and volatile elements of the wood leaving it kind of condensed in a form where you can leave imprints of black um, and create early forms of mark making when we see this in history, where there is an abundance of wood in the natural geography in ancient times, we'll see charcoal being made as a byproduct of cooking. So it's one of the first tools used to make artwork. Early recordings 28,000 years ago in cave paintings in the Nayu cave of France, you see this amazing ibex where the marks look so fresh, it almost looks like they were painted yesterday. Also with the Apollo cave stones, I think this one's recorded 25,000 BC. Um, you can just see early examples of modern transportable art and again the gestures that they use are still so dark and vibrant you can really capture this sign of what was important to the artist and the culture in the this paleolithic period when i think about the history of charcoal artists in the renaissance is where i jump to first in my mind where charcoal was refined in the revolution of artistic practice and culture that was happening at the time so how the artist did this was by finely grinding the charcoal and then binding it with wax or gums to make sticks, crayons and pencils, which would have made it much easier for artists to get a finer detail with their charcoal drawings. A great example of this is Da Vinci's study of a woman's hands, where the gestural softness in the ochre shows a lightweight, expressive way of depicting the human form. It was a lot less wasteful and time consuming to organize your thoughts before a painting with charcoal first. If we x-ray some of the great masters in classical paintings, like with some of Raphael's studies, you can see this in Raphael's cartoons, how often beautiful charcoal drawings are depicted underneath the final painting image. When I think about charcoal, I think about Florence when I was learning to be an artist, to be a student of art. And in Florence, they taught us that charcoal is where you should begin with life drawing. Now there's a huge history of life drawing with charcoal and it's still a very strong practice today. There's still so many exquisite drawings, not just at the Florence Academy, but in history of beautiful life studies and how charcoal captures light and shadow and form in a way which simplifies and takes the pressure away of painting with oil and colour. It just lets the artist focus on what's essential in the composition. I myself use Nitrum charcoal. It is the best in my opinion, and it comes in all sorts of densities. I use just an average 5B, which is quite soft, but is handy for blending. And when you're using sandpaper to put it into a point, it doesn't feel like it disappears immediately in your hand. If you are interested in learning a little bit more about charcoal practice in your own artwork, I can recommend books like Drawing with Charcoal by Kate Boucher, or even Life Drawing Lessons from the Great Masters, of which there are many, many books. And I'll add a few links of these in the comments below if you are thinking about embarking on a journey with charcoal yourself. It's not until the 20th century that charcoal starts to gain a reputation in its own right. Before then, fixatives, which are always needed for charcoal work. Nowadays, we have handy sprays, but back in the Renaissance, drawings would have had to be dipped in baths of gum to keep the charcoal from kind of blowing and dusting away. Thinking about charcoal's arrival on the art scene in a big way, my mind immediately goes to Jura, who, whose first notoriety with charcoal was with Night, Death and the Devil. This exquisite piece was actually presented to Hitler in World War II at one of the Nazi rallies in Nuremberg. And I think it just kind of then became this obsessively symbolic image. And again, looking at it, it is so beautiful, but the charcoal captures such a dark, dramatic energy that I think it kind of almost encapsulates some of the, the death and drama that was happening at the time. There are so many artists which I wanted to talk about in this video who use charcoal, so I've condensed it to just my favourite select few to give you an example of the effectiveness of charcoal in contemporary art. So Mondrian in 1914, with his pier and ocean 
series used charcoal as a kind of carving into the painting to create his kind of description of space and light and line. Similarly, Paul Klee with the Rhine at Juringsburg in 1937 does these gorgeous lines in waves, just so simple with the charcoal, yet so effective. Other artists a bit earlier maybe read on The Smiling Spider in 1881. This is a great example of how the blackness of charcoal is exactly that. Sometimes it can just look like a spider on the page. And I know that the way that Redon was using charcoal definitely inspired later artists. Picasso used line and Matisse was using line at the same time to create a study of form and gesture, a softness of shape within their paintings, almost creating hybrids, if you will. And this influenced my own work a lot during the kind of last few years as I was looking at an expressive exploration of myself in my work, how I could use charcoal to be experimental and treat the work I was doing almost like mapping the space with the charcoal as well as kind of incorporating paint. Picasso and Matisse are two key, key charcoal artists I always think of as a big influence for my own practice. The way that they have this simple confidence with the gestures and lines they use, cutting into the space, creating shapes and depth and density using the very hard pressure of the charcoal blows my mind in the way it's kind of incorporated within the painting itself. And this hybrid of the medium influenced my work a lot and the way I loved that expressive experimentation with charcoal. So I started experimenting with mapping my landscapes with the charcoal, going with the medium. I think when you see Matisse in his studio, he was always far away from his canvas, putting charcoal on a big stick so he could kind of create very dramatic gestures. Picasso was known for being incredibly prolific with the amount of charcoal studies he would do, you know, sometimes hundreds at a time. And this is kind of what I liked. It felt immediate, it didn't feel too precious. And I think with my own work, it gave me a sense of confidence to keep experimenting. And that's how I arrived at the Atlas series, which were these spindly webs of landscapes. And often the under descriptions of my paintings, they helped me map where my mind was going and create a sense of kind of 3D space, which I found really invaluable. Also in my own practice, charcoal became a lot more vital to me when I went to America, visiting New York. Charcoal was the perfect way to capture the landscape and energy of the city. But I read in an article recently that the Met Museum on Fifth Avenue have recently acquired a large collection of drawings in charcoal. One of the acquisitions was Claude Laurent's 1638 coastal steam study made in Italy. He also used brown washes of ink with the softness of the black in the charcoal to create something incredibly gentle and sun drenched. The late afternoon 17th century charcoal study is quite similar to the work I'm studying at the moment and I know I've spoken about Claude's work before in tandem with being one of Turner's great influences but he was so sought after but he, he creates with the charcoal an idealized softness. He's a draftsman and charcoal was so important to his practice, but you see his understanding of the softness of the medium could translate beautifully to oil as well. Just talking about the Met, they've also acquired one of Elizabeth Lebrun's beautiful studies of Marie Antoinette, who was her patron. So this is Marie Antoinette in the park, also done with white chalk, which is a brilliant highlighter that goes with charcoal. Um, Le Brun is amazing as an artist. I know I've mentioned her before again. She escaped France, luckily, before the French Revolution. Um, obviously, she was living with Marie Antoinette. You see the delicacy of the fabric, the femininity, the way the charcoal expresses this really exquisite boofiness of her skirt. But it's soft. It's been blended in a way which is fashionable. But I think there's something about the intimacy that the artist would have had with her patroness, um, Mary Antoinette that just shows in this drawing it's soft it's feminine it's slightly rapid but the charcoal captures this in a way that might have been more intimate than maybe just a sort of very established painting so you never underestimate the power of something gentle and soft and unassuming like charcoal and I think America is quite good for this the collection that you know, the Met Museums and sort of some of the amazing museums in um, New York and LA have to offer. I think I should go and visit as soon as I can because there's so much to talk about. I know a few of you have mentioned the Hudson River School of Art, um, asking me questions about art across the pond. So I'll have to put a pin in this and maybe go into some kind of American art history. We could start with 
the charcoal drawings of John Singer Sargent, who is my favourite American artist in history, who does these beautiful charcoal portraits, um, and Whistler as well. There's so much we could talk about, so let's put a pin in that uh, for another time. I, I will link as well the Met and MoMA's uh, demos on charcoal for any of you who are interested in the link below. So many artists use the versatility of charcoal in so many different ways and effects for their own practice. And I love this adaptability of the medium, particularly smudging it. There's nothing quite as satisfying as getting your hands incredibly dirty and covered in charcoal. It's more forgiving than ink and less harsh, I think. It has potency and a kind of softness and gentleness to it, which mirrors the way we paint with oil, which is again, as you know, a very forgiving medium. Contemporary artists who I think are incredible and very skilled at using charcoal. Phoebe Hicks, who we have spoken about in The Portrait of a Portrait Artist. She is the maestro of using that beautiful, exquisite medium of charcoal to draw the most amazing portraits. Um, there's Kathy Kalowitz, Frank Auerbach, Henry Moore. Lots we could talk about, but I'd rather share with you artists that I know and one artist who used to be my tutor at City and Guilds in London when I was a bachelor's student. His name's Rhys Jones. He does the most amazing landscapes, these solitary dramatic landscapes in charcoal. His ability of using them is incredible and I feel like he takes charcoal to another level. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you in case anyone was looking to research contemporary artists who are making waves in the art scene now right now using charcoal so have a look at jones's work if um that appeals to you it's the strong contrast and drama the versatility of charcoal which will makes me love it so much in my practice. It helps me figure out the preliminary ideas I have whenever I'm approaching a landscape before I want to dive in with paint. And without it, I would have made many mistakes over the years with my work. So charcoal's given me a way of working through ideas almost in a kind of 3D way, using line to map ideas without having to worry about waiting for paint to dry. So I hope in sharing some of these ideas I've had about charcoal and a little bit of the history, you've kind of got a new appreciation for this small but mighty medium, because I know I have. So thank you so much for listening and watching this episode about charcoal. I'd love to hear your comments below if this has inspired any thoughts you'd like to share about charcoal. Um, and please like and subscribe. You can follow me at Jess Oliver Art on my Instagram. And I will see you next week.